beautiful people. More life, more blessings. You know the vibes. We outside. We are back with another episode of the Door for the Love podcast. You know me, your host, Eric Buddy Davis. You know my co host is in the building. So, Smith Five, what it do, baby? What up, home? You already know what it is. So, just in case y'all were wondering, we're feeling good, feeling great. Feeling great, feeling good, and we hope you are too. See, now we keep this thing off, man. We like to check each other's temperature, see how my brother is doing for the week, for the day. A little mental health check in. Yes, sir. My brother, how you feeling over there? Feeling good for another episode. Feeling thankful that we continue to progress yes, and continue to be a good guest, man. So, y'all, in for a specialty. We got another guest coming in, gonna share his journey. Tell us a little bit of hidden gems about his craft and career. But I'm feeling good, man. How are you? Man, I'm feeling lovely, my boy. You know, everything's going good. Having a great week. Life is prospering. Uh, so many things coming out of the pipeline. I just had a uh, pause for my Mason Cam watches. Oh, sure. Check your pipeline. <laughs> but, uh, you know, me and I uh, had a meeting just recently with the mayor of Annapolis, uh, Mr. Gavin Buckley. So I, I feel good. good. It went great. We, we can talk about it later on when we want to drop a gym or something. But I feel good. I feel great about things that's coming our way. Meeting with the mayor of Annapolis is always cool. No, just little small things to do. You know, meeting with the mayors on a Wednesday at the market house. <laughs> Nothing big. <laughs> so uh, we'll get right into it. Topic number one for the night. What's the theme? For the love of diversity. Okay. Now let me break it down what I mean for that. It is important, in my opinion, to expose yourself or children to things dissimilar from their everyday life and their upbringing. For our world to evolve, in my opinion, we must give a valiant effort to understanding different communities, religions, ethnicities, etc. This effort will help, in my opinion, unify more people just like music, movies, and love, unlike politics, religion, and race does. So, without knowledge, in my opinion, there is no true care or understanding for anything outside of your world. So, let's talk about how important it is to broaden our horizons. Not even at a young age, I think it's very impactful if you get it young, but you're never too old to learn. So let me hear how you feel about that. Well, speaking of age and diversity, I'm already making sure my son, who is 11 years old, knows about diversity from all different types of levels. Like, I'm constantly telling him not to judge or treat his peers or people he sees in school a certain type of way because they look different to him, they may speak different, or because they might like something different than you. So. You know, as, as it pertains to talking to the youngins, that's what we're here to tell y'all today. Like, diversity is something that you definitely should be open open to in all aspects, your career and life. And um, even for myself, like, I'm a diverse person in my career. You know, I, in one hat, I'm doing graphic design. Another hat, I'm doing murals. You know, I'm doing work with tunnel vision. But ultimately, it's, it works out well for me because I can step in different rooms and arenas and adapt. Um, I can sit back and be open-minded to conversations with different professionals that's not in my field right. and then still walk away learning something that I'm going to be able to put back into my career and my daily lifestyle. So diversity is key. You know, that, that statement or quote, it wasn't made for nothing. A lot of popular, famous people, inspirational people will tell you diversity is key. Absolutely. You know me, I like to stamp myself as Mr. Diverse. Um, I felt like I grew up in as black as a family as you can grow up, but I always had a knack for learning other cultures and other people. Growing up Catholic, as a black man, might be unusual to some. Uh, most of my family was Baptist, but uh, going to St. Mary's Church, which is located in Annapolis, Maryland, that's also where I went to Sunday school and I ended up going to private school and high school. I think that diversified my portfolio. What was the percentage of white to black at the private school that you went to? I don't know the percentage numbers, but let's put it like this. When I graduated my senior year with 17 black people, and I'm including Calvin, the uh, janitor. That was our man. He was always in the building. To me, he was like a classmate. <laughs> he was always there to play basketball. Calvin, leave stuff. Calvin's there for you. But um, I always felt like you, music is the universal language. You know me, I'm always about unification and trying to be inclusive. I work at the University of Maryland Dental School, but um, through one of the programs, I got a certificate in uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion from Northwestern University. And that whole course was about people from different walks of life, different age groups, all trying to find the same answers to whatever our homework was that week. So it could be something like a race relation question, or it could just be something about what actually does equity look like in your job if you did request it or want it. Like, what exactly do you want for? Do you want that's reasonable? So stuff like that. But just to speak on diversity by itself, I also feel like, as I said in the intro, that's how you break through race barriers. That's how you break through organizations, corporations. A lot of people do it because it's the quota. 
But people that actually do it for the real reason because they see the world in diverse ways and they see that you can learn stuff from all different communities if you open up your mind to it. But if you just frame your world into whatever you just think's work and always just doing it that way, you could be successful in it. But I think you're going to hit a point that you got to step outside your world and you're not going to know how to maneuver it because you never had to deal with anything you weren't in control of. So I just think diversifying your portfolio is important in whatever you're doing. Who is a public figure, entertainer, athlete that you feel like has thrived off being diverse and has, the career has propelled just because of that diversity? Right. I could pick somebody funny, like a goddamn person off like a uh, daytime soap opera, like Shamal Moore or somebody like that, because I feel like they know how to maneuver through all industries. But I'm going to go with Dave Chappelle, because I feel like in the beginning of his career, we didn't look at him as a, well, I can't say we. Most people didn't look at him as a black comedian. They looked at him as a person that does more Caucasian humor, that corny humor, all that. It wasn't until the Dave Chappelle show and him getting that money and then him taking that money and then him being pretty much outcasted for the black communities, black communities to, to support him and all of that, that you saw the black standing behind him. But he never changed his delivery and how he does his performance and his art. To me, it's very well crafted and it, he separates himself from most other comedians, just how he does it. And I look at Dave Chappelle as one of the most diversified celebrities in the game and he doesn't try because he's black as hell mm -hmm. but he can walk in any room and fit in every room and know how to have a conversation in any room so that would be my choice what about you patrick mahomes <laughs> break that down patrick mahomes to me he almost fits under the category of where you see people talk about russell wilson and sandy corny Thanks. but we've seen russell i mean uh patrick mahomes dad one of the black <laughs> smoking on that Joe Burrow. You know, he gonna come out and talk <laughs> his shit, and then you know you got Patrick Mahomes' white side, so you got a diverse dude right there. But when it come to gameplay, you could put any nigga in front of Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. That nigga gonna bring that dog out. That's actually a good choice. And I, I respect Patrick Mahomes, especially if you guys ain't seen the Netflix uh, special. I believe it's called Quarterbacks. They highlight Patrick Mahomes, and if you ain't had respect for him now. You will have to see in that documentary because regardless of the you know white side or black side, this dude is a real dude. He's down to earth, always committed to his craft, and always going hard. So that's my choice. No, absolutely. I think that was a good question as well. So I feel like um, it's not really much more to touch on. I just want to leave with the message that make sure that you try to put an emphasis on being diverse in your life. Date who you like, do the job that you like, and I hope you know what you like. But if you don't, do not limit yourself based off people telling you that you're supposed to be this type of person or you're supposed to do this type of job or because you're from an inner city neighborhood, you should rap, you should play basketball. If you're going to be a scientist, if you're going to be a doctor, go look up that field and go talk to people that probably don't look like the people you grew up with and get into it 100% of the way. And as a parent, stop being that parent that's telling your child that because they're doing something you ain't grew up doing that that shit is weird or it shouldn't be done. I was growing up in a family where nobody really did art. And not that I was looked at as weird, but when I compare my job of working at Navy Federal Credit Union, which is the bank, to going full time to be an artist, everybody wanted me to stay on the banking side when I had way more mental freedom on the other side. And certain times I make more money than what I made at the bank, you know what I'm saying? But don't try to box your kids in, man. Let them be them. And I got to actually add something to that because for myself, raising a child with special needs, I went through a phase where I felt like I had to put my son in sports because all my friends' sons would play sports and all that. Long story short, my, my son ran straight through a soccer net the first game that I put him in. And I said, you know what? We're not going to do this again. And I had to start liking hiking and nature and water or just jumping in water no matter the time of year because that's what my son loved. So he opened my world up to things that I wouldn't have typically done or I might have just, you know, a little scowl at it. Like, all right, I'll do it, but I don't want to do it. Now I enjoy nature more than that. If you don't mind, share some of the, share one or two things that you've learned from your son. Oh, man, when we want to talk diversity and talking about special needs, man, for one, I think I'm a natural patient person. But if you know anything about the autism spectrum disorder, patience is something that you, if you don't have it, you're going to have to learn it because it's tough. And the days are long, the nights are long. It's never really an answer to certain things. People still don't know even what causes it. So um, I learned just understanding from my son, not trying to make someone fit your world, but learning how to adapt to others, which we actually do naturally. We live in America, a country that wasn't built for us, but we always act like, well, you live here, this and that. But we actually know how to adapt. Black people are so re resilient that we always find a way. And I think 
that's something that I would give as a gem for anybody raising a child with special needs. And I would say something else that I learned from Donovan is being comfortable in your own skin. My son doesn't think twice about doing anything that he wants to do. And uh, he's now at that teenager mature age that I'm going to leave some stuff off camera for y'all. But just not be having to deal with the works when it comes to him and just learning himself as maturity. So uh, just being ex accepting things, not making everything a big deal. I just feel like so many, it's all I always like to say, it's way more ways to die than it is to live. And that life expectancy for somebody level 3 autism, which my son is, is 28 years old. He's 17 next year. So if I'm fighting that count, I got 11, if I'm fighting that statistic, I have 11 more years with him at, a, at the best quality of life I could possibly give him or teach him. So we live every day with that type of energy and that type of expectation. I just always want the best out of whatever he can give me on that day. And I try to give him my best as his father. I love it. For sure, man. So, moving on from that, we have our first sponsorship of the episode, and that is going to go to the Is What It Is Network. I know you're a fan. I know I'm a fan. Tell the people what the Is What It Is Network is. So, in other words, outside of Is What It Is Network, they can be known as the Is What It Is Podcast. We talking about the show that's popular on YouTube right now with Killer Cam, Mace, Treasure Wilson, and then they got two special guests that come on throughout the week, which is uh, Maurice Claret and O.J. Simpson. Juice! <clears throat> I mean, the show is as raw as it can get. Barbershop Talk brought to a, a huge platform, um, but also really constructed well. They got Treasure Wilson mediating the whole thing and making sure she keep Cam and Mason in line right. whenever they go over time. Um, but it's the true testament of actually our guests coming in, you know what I mean, being diverse and being able to jump around different fields, but then when you actually hop in and you master it. Like, you may not come on sharp the first time that when you come out, but as everybody watching see, over time you, you start to master it. And that show specifically, shit, when they came out, you start to see people getting fired around the uh, corporate world in sports Facts. commentating. So, Facts. we don't know if it's a fact that it's a trickle effect from Cam and Mace, and it is what it is, but I'm willing to bet my money that it is, because I wake up every single day they show drop at 8 a.m. I'm tuned in, I'm dying laughing. And I'm, I'll be one of the first to admit, when they first came out, I didn't know how it was going to work. Yeah, I think everybody thought I mean, we were surprised at the, and happy for the comeback uh, friendship between Mace and Cam. But, you know, not seeing them commentate lengthy on things, especially sports, I had a bit of doubt. But, you know, fell in love with them. Pause, man. They, they really <laughs> hold it down. It's a good show. Yeah, I just want to shout them out for diversifying this, uh, their portfolio. Once again, that's the theme of tonight's episode. And I feel like when you're a rapper or an athlete, the outside world, especially critics, they're going to always try to limit you and box you in as if you can't be passionate about more than one thing. So I like how thorough they are coming from basketball backgrounds to speak that and what they're not knowledgeable about, they hire some Hispanics to talk for baseball season. They go hire somebody that's actual professional athletes like Maurice Corbett, like OJ Simpson, um, other guests that they've had on like Brandon Marshall and others, just to give an insight and honestly just like We've said before, people feel more comfortable talking to people that come from where they come from. So all the athletes or different sports analysts and uh, TV people that come on that show, they feel way more relaxed and comfortable because it's not a normal sports broadcast. And as soon as you think it is, Cam will say some shit off the brick and be like, no, we don't do that over here. And then they're going to say something and people are going to be like, okay, yeah. that's what we're doing. So I just feel like that's a plus. And, you know, a thing I like to say is that people don't like you when you drive well in that lane. And it just makes them feel like that they're losing something because they might not have a diversified portfolio or diversified yeah, habits. Pull on the streets like you do. That's it. So the moment that they see you taken out of their pot, as most people will feel, when you come, you come from my pot, I'm going to feel the way too. But you better adjust and adapt. Don't hate. Find a way to get better at what you're doing or you're going to be out of here. So I just think that um, they deserve it. Shout out to the Is What It Is Network, TV show, podcast, Mason Bethel, Cameron Giles, Stat Baby. Y'all are doing an amazing job. Keep shaking the game up. That's what we here to do in the podcast space. Shake the game up with your authenticity and stay real. And shout out to them to end it off, you know, giving, giving everybody a new chance. Like Cam and Mace, two artists that we looked up to growing up that kind of faded out due to their own circumstances. Nice. Um, and then you had Mace that took the route of going to church. And Maurice Claret and OJ Simpson who two, had two cases and situations that could have had them in jail to this day. And both you know went I mean? to jail. So, just speaking about them two, seeing them first come on the show, 
I thought it was gonna come out with them speaking on that, but they ain't giving them a new leaf for life because you don't even think about that when they get on the on the show right now. You, right. you know they're gonna hit you with some good knowledge. OJ gonna hit you talking about the Buffalo Bills, giving you his uh, NFL okay, analysis, yeah. and Maurice Claret. <laughs> Man, he's been so awesome when it comes to uh, breaking down some of the shit that's going on in college that I had no idea about. Like right. he's broken down the NIL deals and and a lot of the back end shit that go on with NILs and and he's gave me a new knowledge about it. So again, shout out to it is what it is, giving uh, the game a change and giving people chances. Shout out to y'all fellas. So I think it's time for us to bring on our special guest for tonight. Let's get into it. So, our guest for today's episode of the Do It For The Love podcast is Mr. Devin Robinson. He is a music artist, actor, movie producer, and realtor. He runs an organization called Global Mind and Demeanor. I know you see the blame. AKA GMD. <laughs> so, my brother, man, welcome to the show, my brother. Appreciate y'all having me. Absolutely, thank you. absolutely, thank you. absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. So, we always like to start the show off with the guests getting the who, what, when, and where. Um, so, outside of the titles that we just laid out for who you are, give us a little bit more background about who Dev is and you know how you got to this point. Uh, well, first of all, I want to say that I'm a father. I have two kids. I heard you guys talking about your kids earlier, so that, that directly connected with me. I have two kids. Um, Ages? My son is 10. Okay. And my daughter is six. Beautiful. And they're wild. <laughs> I stay all along. Wow. Um, I go by the name Devin Robinson. Depending on who you're talking to, they're going to say different things. As an artist, I'm GMD Dev. Uh, as a realtor, of course, I'm Devin Robinson. And if you know me personally, everybody just say Dev. I guess that, that speaks to the diversity thing yeah. right there. Facts. 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 Man, wear many hats. Yeah. Yes. Respectfully. Yes. Respectfully. Yes. yes. I just, uh, I like to create. And um, I like y'all was saying about diversity. I try not to limit myself. If I have an idea and I feel like it fits with my characteristics, then I'm gonna put the idea out there and go after it. For sure. So as we've listed off the musical artist, being an actor, movie producer, realtor, father, if you can touch on pretty much, we just said what it is that you do, but can you speak on what it is that you do with those titles? You can speak on all of them, or you can speak to the ones that you feel like you want to push to the forefront today. Uh, I would briefly speak on all of them. As a realtor, I basically help them build the community uh, by helping people understand how they can purchase, that they actually can purchase real estate. A lot of people, before I became a realtor, I never even thought about right. nothing in that alley until I became a realtor. So. You know, I, I help some people get off of Section 8 just because they see me put a post on Instagram mm -hmm. and then they're like, oh, I can buy a house. Right. Help get off Section 8. I hope y'all hear that. Now yeah. find a way to stay in it. No, nah, she really, the, the first person that I, that I helped get off Section 8, she just straight jumped out there and got off of it. And then she got, after I posted her, she actually motivated, like, my, even my sister got off Section 8. And, you know, they bought a house, so That's good. That's uh, I help build the community through real estate as a realtor. Uh, as an artist, that's just like a passion. Like, I just like, I love rapping. I love poetry. I just, I just love doing it. And I'm figuring out, um, you know, more so the business aspect of it now. The entertainment aspect of doing music versus just doing it. I'm figuring that out through uh, getting booked for shows, hostings and throwing out old parties and stuff. People want to be entertained, get away from life, and that's more so the business aspect of it. Got it. Um, and far as the filming and acting in movies, uh, again, that's another creative lane where I'm just like, uh, just creating, man. Just creating entertainment and just having fun with my thoughts. And just, uh, to me, it's fun having ideas, writing it down, and then getting the people around you that believe in the idea and then making that idea actual reality. Work to life. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Actually having like people come up to me that I don't know and say that they watch these movies and stuff that I wrote and that I'm acting in, but it was just in my brain. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Y'all know my guys on Tubi strong. Two movies yeah. on Tubi, right? We two movies in uh, Decisions 1 and 2. I'm um, currently working on a new project called Don't Trust. Decisions 1 and 2 is more so like uh, 
it's like a crime drama urban type okay. movie. Definitely got some good messages in there about how you can uh you know win win your way out of the streets and stuff like that uh the legal way um and just about the a lot of the negativity that come with like the urban inner inner city environment a lot of the stuff that come with living in them environments and how you should not let it trick you gotcha. um that's decisions one and two and currently i wrote a movie called don't trust uh that's more of a romance thriller hmm. and um it's going to definitely be a thriller. That's all I can that say. That sounds like a good one. Yeah, that's all I can say about right. that one. Well, I know you don't know this. Uh, one of my people's from back in the map, but his name is uh, Ragnar Ron. He got a series called Woods Jungle. Okay. Um, and the more that's coming, I did one scene in that, so I'm an actor. Okay. Let you know, um, <laughs> if you just consider it for anybody for Decisions 3 yeah. or the love thriller, I feel like I could be a good ex-boyfriend, husband-boyfriend, whatever yeah. it be. I need you. That actually, I want, that's what I'm just talking. That made you know. me think of a really good question. So being an independent filmmaker and and director, I'm pretty sure you get a lot of that where somebody like, oh, I, I feel like I got an image. <laughs> Shame is So yeah. how, what's that process when it comes to weeding out people who just, they may really want to support you and help you out, but they may not have the acting skills or what it takes to get in. How do you weed out and pick who you want to be in these movies? So I never discredit nobody mm -hmm. because nobody told me to be an actor. Mm -hmm. Nobody told me to write a movie. Uh, I just already created uh, I heard y'all talking about religion and stuff I'm not religious but I, my foundation and everything is built around God so like I never would discredit anybody and I would never want to belittle anybody because I've been really I've been belittled that's why I started mm -hmm. writing my own movies mm -hmm. so I never would do that to anybody I would just if they don't come to the auditions then I don't take them seriously gotcha. that, that's my thing if you make it to the auditions that's your opportunity and I also as far as the auditions I took myself out of that because right now I have a personal connection with you so when you come to the auditions I don't remember everything you just said so I'm gonna be like all right where am I gonna put bro at that's, that's in my eyes yeah. yeah, no, so I stopped I, like I took myself for don't trust I took myself out of the whole casting part of it gotcha. and I have just a casting team of people they might not even have any experience but they can see who can act and who can't. So I tell them come to the auditions and let the casting team pick who's the characters and who's not. So you don't need experience. It's just, right. are you talented enough for that character or not? And, and if not, they might not have you as an ex-husband. They might have you on there as a cashier okay. or as a bank manager or something, gotcha. depending on what you know what they think fit for you. I'm not a count. <laughs> you know, listen, there's nothing that you're about to say that I ain't down for the road. We're gonna make it happen. But I do know in all seriousness, I do appreciate the fact that you don't belittle nobody and you give everybody a chance. I think all of us probably can um put ourselves in a seat of one time in life somebody making us feel like, damn, like I ain't I ain't that, like I ain't worth it, I can't have this opportunity. So um that's a special thing. You put you're not only putting a positive vibe around what you're doing, you're instilling power in the people. Because you're letting them see like, yo, I didn't think I could do this, I'm showing you that you can do this, and you're giving them the platform to do it. So, salute to you, my brother. You. So, the next question that we normally do with our guests is pretty much ask you when. Um, you already said your children are 10 and 6, God, and so we know you became a father. Um, we don't know when you really took real to, uh, you know, doing stuff for community service. We don't know when you really took off with the movie stuff. So if you want to give people, um, you know, pretty much a background to when all these things happened. When did you know that that was your purpose or it was serious? So uh, as far as the filming, um, I really, I really wrote decisions really just to get a message out there because I learned. So the guy Gotti that I played in decisions, he basically uh, go through a bunch of street stuff. My purpose in writing the decisions in the first place was to tell somebody how to clean their money up. And that was, that's the message at the end of decisions. I learned that after becoming a realtor. And I just sat and I prayed. This was probably 2020. I was like, God, let me figure out, can you help me figure out a way, like seriously. I was like, God, can you help me figure out a way to get this message across to people that's not boring, like, the dudes that I've known and that I've been around and where I used to do stuff, if somebody walked up to me and be like, bro, you need to stop doing this and do this, I'm like, bro, shut up. Like, shut the fuck up. Right. So 
that's how I became the movie writer. That was probably 20, I wrote it probably 2020, we filmed it 2020 and it came out 2021. That was your first movie? That first was the first one. one. For, for that being your first movie and getting it done in a year, I definitely would like to commend you on that because Dang. Hollywood, you know, you know shit. I just seen some right. movies take three years to really develop and come out. So to see that you, you know, took your own initiative, wrote your own movie, gathered all the people and right. did that in a year, is very commendable. To so eliminate the yellow tape yourself, pretty yeah. much. That's what you did. You just and that's, what, shit. that's what we all about on Door for the Love. I love been able to highlight people like him who really starting from the bottom and don't need Hollywood to get on the big screen. It's really about uh, having, I feel like I have the right people around me that believe in me. That's how it, it happened. First God, because if I didn't include him enough and the people wouldn't even be around me because right. I feel like he going to put them around me because I'm righteous in what I'm doing. But that, my idea, I have everything completed so it, I feel like people will believe in it because it's not like everywhere like it's, it's a complete idea I have the locations and everything and then when I bring it to people they're like oh yeah I'll be a part of that like my brother for example he's the other half of GMD uh, shout out to GMD TV um, he don't even care bro like he's so busy he couldn't even be here but when it comes to my ideas bro do not even care because he already know that I'm coming correct. He like, bro, what are we doing? You trust your process. Yeah, he's just like, what are we doing? Yeah. So what you need me at type. Exactly. He just like, It's good to add that binder. It's good to add that business period in your life period. But I have the far as the directors, uh shout out Shalice Williams. She directed Decisions One. She, Same you know her. Yeah, yeah. She pretty famous. <laughs> um, <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> so you know she I brought the idea to her and she trusted the idea. I believe because she was pretty busy too, but I believe she trusted the idea just because it was a complete idea and not like something that I just was just talking about. Right. So, you know. And she's then, invested in it a little bit because she understood this, you know, the assignment. Yes, yeah, for sure. And um, you guys, oh yeah, the real estate. So, real estate was before the movie stuff and that was probably about 2017. Okay. Because I was more so... Working a job, just getting irritated with life, just kind of like what, what would I, what can I do, um, you know, to stop working for other people because it was irritating me. Uh, just being in an environment with somebody with a foot on my neck. I, I remember you said something earlier about how you was the banker and then you was, you had more freedom as the artist, mm -hmm. and that's how I felt about being a realtor. Once I got the license. Um, I kind of just, kind of was just like faded away from working and just, and I like the fact that I could help people. And that started 20, I got my license 2017, but started practicing it in 2018. So that's when real estate started and I've been doing music for almost like 10 years now. Okay. But seriously, I would say only seriously for like five years. The first five years I was kind of just like, record and just having fun. I be having fun now, but I be more so having fun and trying to be business oriented with it. So I started rapping probably 20, 23, yeah, like 2023. And then we started getting booked for shows and doing stuff like that probably about 20, Hold up, what did I say, 2020? I'm I was going to say you've been rapping for 10 years and started in January this year. Uh, 2013. Okay. <laughs> 2013. I think I knew what you meant, but I knew you was going to correct it. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, 2013, and then we started doing the shows and stuff, probably about 20, 2016. Okay. So, you know, I feel bad, bro. I swear. Man. Everything past 2016 is like a blur, especially with COVID. COVID felt yeah. like it was three years long. It was only a year and a half to two. So trust me, I feel you on. Appreciate y'all correcting that. No, I, you I thought I was. You right. actually corrected yourself. I just, I just played it on it when you said it. I was going to tell was you at right. some point. But um, so uh, before we even get into rapid fire questions, I wanted to take the opportunity because you just shouted out your brother and your team. Can you tell the people a little bit about what GMD is? 
Yeah. I want them to know because ne our next segment is called Rapid Fire Questions, and I'll explain to you what that is. But okay. a part of your what you just described, I mean, part of the when you just described all of the things that you do and when you started them. But I want to know a little bit more about the what and when to GMD. You, you're wearing your symbol, it's your organization, it's your brand. I want the people to know exactly what you stand for and what that is. All right, so y'all know Baltimore with the dummies talk. Okay. Originally, we was called Get Money Dummies. Uh -huh. Like when we first started rapping. And uh, that used to be my, my brother's uh, Twitter handle, was Get Money Dummies, uh, Dad's Twitter handle. And, you know, we was going around performing. That was more so the, the early stages and us just having fun. Okay. Um, and then one person, I respect his ideas, but I still don't like them. Like, <laughs> I still don't like them just because I felt like he was like some stylist or something. And like, I don't think that he had all that much style. Like, shoes was mismatched and all types of stuff. But in particularly, what he said angered me initially because of what he had on. I didn't even want to hear nothing <laughs> that he said. Because everybody dapping him up, shaking his hands and stuff. And I'm just like, who is this guy? And then he was like, why do you guys call yourself dummies? I'm like, we're not dumb. That's just how we talk. He's like, well, I watch you guys perform. You're pretty good performers, but... You shouldn't call yourself dummies. <laughs> and then I was just like, who is this nerd? Like, for real, like, cause I'm just, right, right, right. I'm just like, but, who is this he nerd? He had a point to a certain. He had a huge point. And once I started maturing, I was just like, bro, we can't keep calling myself so dumb. And I don't even talk like that. <laughs> right. I don't even talk like that. That's funny. So, and then Dez, oh, he, Dez let me take the lead on a lot. Even if, I feel like he, <laughs> He'll jump off a bridge with me if I say that the result is going to be something. Right. Because he believed in me so much. He that's just love. like, bro, that's come love. up with something. That's that's like, what do, what do you want to do? It's get money dummies. That's what we is. And I was just was like, global minded demeanor. It's still GMD. And he was like, bro, what, do you <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> and then I'm like, think big. And he like, well, I'm still, I'm just going to say GMD. I'm not saying all of that. I'm like, well, we on our LLC, we're going to put Global Minded Demeanor just so it can look right on paper. We can say GMD, but when they break it down, it's going to say yeah. Global Minded Demeanor. And I think we did that. I think that was about 2017, 2016, 2017 when we switched it over. Like, bro, we, we getting older. Like, niggas, right. niggas can't be walking around talking like that. Something just sounds Outside of Baltimore. Yeah, anyway. gotcha. That whole perspective that they have just told us, like, a lot of the youngins right now, when you look at their group names or their cliques, it's Talk a lot of two, three, four initial, you know, synonyms or break, broken down, but it's always something that literally they telling on themselves. Game you know name, they, something that's, yeah. uh, something that describes exactly where and what, when y'all do it, yeah. it's normally something I mean, that's very yeah, telling. And we've been bringing up Young Thug and YSO a lot, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they the perfect example, you know, they had to literally scramble before this case kicked off to try to give a re-meaning to a lot of the words and lingo that they use because they was catching themselves up. So I really just like how y'all really took that and you challenged yourself and came up with something that's still relatable to what you're doing and what y'all got going on. Right. And then on paper, it just looked that much better. So shout out for that. Thanks. And y'all took power in the word too, because to me it's growth. And like you said, I still don't like you. That's <laughs> but I think it's growth in understanding and knowing like, all right, for one, you defended it. It's almost like how people try to use the N-word against us. For one, we took it and made it sound baffled. I can understand why people from other you know, generations don't like it. I will always respect that. But we took it and made it a something. We made it a word of endearment. We call our brothers that. We disgrace. It's literally a word that we use to mean a lot of stuff. And, and if you're stupid, you a dumbass. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. Can right. Use so it like the way you defended dumbass, yeah. but then at the same time, you're like, you know what? He actually got a point. Let me use this and I'm gonna empower myself. Oh, my mind and demeanor, dummies. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so you know, it made it make sense. Yeah. Um, so, moving on into our next segment, we got something called rapid fire questions. So, the whole purpose of this is to give you quick questions. We don't want you to take a lot of time thinking about it. Quick answer. If you feel like you gotta elaborate, we got a segment after this where we can come back to something. But cool. so literally, quick answers, express how you feel about it. Me and Sal are gonna hit you back and forth. Right to left. Pause. <laughs> Super pause. Yeah, no, I was Flag on the flag. Pause that part. Um, so. I'm getting no pauses. 
All right, so I'll go first. Harder job, selling property or as a producer, convincing artists to believe in your vision? Uh, I would say it's harder as a producer because, well, it's not really hard. All right, hold up. So it depends what I'm talking to. Uh, okay. all right, hold so up. it's either a selling property or it's either like literally you're on set, you're producing a movie, you literally want the scene to look a certain way. I would say selling properties. Okay. Selling properties harder because, um, it's a lot the, more work going into it. Too. Yeah, but it's just like uh, sometimes people be in their own way of doing things. So as a producer, they gotta listen to me anyway. <laughs> Off my set. My <laughs> yeah. As a selling a property, if it's not my prop, it's not mine. So it's like I'm helping somebody else. So they don't. I'm I'm also in their world, world trying to convince them to work with me. Versus as a producer, you in my world. Okay. So. Yeah. Gotcha. Good question. Good answer. If if a random person is traveling to Baltimore and they break down and they get stranded, what is the best place that they will be safest at between these answers? Bel Air Road in Addison, Penn and North, or Park Heights in Belvedere? Where they got the best chances of being broken down at? I would say Penn and North, because the police right there. <laughs> the police is right there. Already. Hey, you business. State I can elaborate on that too. Because I was right there. I so I was putting up the posters for decisions too. And, you know, I'm armed. And I'm just looking around like, I don't feel safe at all. Like, at all. Even though the police right there, they got all these cameras. I'm like, how is they doing crimes out here and the police right there? Like, this is crazy. Like no child left behind. <laughs> but behind that the shit. car break now right there though is I don't think that nothing gonna happen to you depending on the time of day because the police always right there. Gotcha, there you go. <laughs> Alright, next question. If you were in well I feel like it was a Baltimore question. I'll go ahead with it. First I'm gonna preface this. In a relationship? I wish, man. Alright, well we'll leave that. We'll leave the love hope for another <laughs> question. <laughs> Prefer your women natural or with big bundles? Uh, I would prefer natural. Okay. I would prefer natural, but there's nothing wrong with the bundles if they got it done right. I'm surprised you need the way you can tell us about you hustling. I'm surprised you ain't one of the ones slinging bundles, bro. Nah. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, now you think of that. You was ever, you ever almost stuck into that lane? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Hey, I think hey, so, bundles ain't never going out. They'll be banging too. <laughs> Why are they here first? It's coming your way, Devin Robinson bundle package. GMD approved. GMD bundle. <laughs> bundle. I like that. I like it too. We need parts. Wildest outtake or experience while filming of either Decisions 1 or 2? What was the wildest unexpected outtake? Um, I would say it was Decisions 2. I would say uh, it's a sex scene with Gotti and Decisions 2. And I had asked her um, before we did the scene, like, you know, I didn't want to make her uncomfortable. And she just like, all right, just act like it's real. And then I started acting like it's real. Like, You're God. Yeah, I'm God. And she like, she stopped being like, all right, now, you're getting too carried away. You're getting too carried away. And then as soon as I start getting carried away, my brother cut it. She wasn't mad, but it was like, all right, I'm doing too much. Hey, I'm going on too. You find that scene. <laughs> You're going to be tripping. <laughs> but you see, <laughs> You're going to be tripping. Yeah, that's, that, that sounds like yeah, a fucking He was getting carried away for real. <laughs> Are you the car also supposed to get carried away? So it was like they they got a long, like an on and off relationship with each other. So they in a the movie, they experienced with each other. Okay. But in real life, me and her wasn't like that. Gotcha. So I was just, you know, you acting. So I was just. Acting. And you wrote it, so you're like, you get what you're trying to get and out And in the first movie, my <laughs> sex scene was not nowhere near as good as the other one. Okay. Because the characters was different. So in part two, I'm like, oh no, we gotta make this the best scene in a movie. But I, I, I do think I was doing a little bit extra. <laughs> Shout out to God. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. Okay, so my next question, we're gonna stick in the world of acting. If you were producing or writing, one male or no one male and female actor you would like to produce a movie for them. what type of movie all right let me think 
black, white, doesn't matter. One male actor, one female actor, produced, written by Dad. Who would it be? All right. Um, for the male actor, I would probably have. Uh, what's your name? I can't. What movie? Uh, Give me something. I, sh I I gotta remember his name because that's bad. Um, I'm bad. Pre. Curry, Michael B. Jordan. Michael, I would probably have Michael B. Jordan. And for the female, I would probably put, uh, my brain just like froze. That's all good. Um, that's that rapid, that rapid fire. <laughs> that's what you want. want that uh, high fire. Uh, yeah, I'll just a little bit. Michael B. Jordan and I would probably pick, um, the first person I can think of right now is uh, Dark Skin Shorty from Black Panther. Lupita? Her. Yeah, okay. that was just like kind of like one of the first people that I was thinking about right now. Because I was thinking like older people like Denzel Washington and yeah. like Halle Berry and stuff, but like younger people would be like Michael B. Jordan and her. Gotcha. And what kind of movie would it be? Written and directed by you? I would want it to be like a like a romance thriller. Okay. Yeah, but like a black romance thriller where like they really I would probably have them in the movie Don't Trust that I'm doing right now. It's hey, shameless plug. He's listening. It's not out yet and he's still casting. Yeah. Michael P. Michael P. What's up, bro? I ain't got the for budget the culture. Yet. For the I culture. Got my I got love, bro. For the culture. Do it for the love, baby. It ain't about the proceeds. What you doing? Y'all writing blood just in there. You need to work. Let's go. Decisions one or two. Alright. Um. And, I, and whatever way you want to answer that, it could be better, better I would overall, say, movie quality, whatever. I just put a poll, I put a, a joint, a, a poll on my stories, and Decisions 1 actually won that poll. I would probably go with Decisions 1 as far as the overall message in 1, but I would pick Decisions 2 as far as the production and the actual, uh, Visuals and the actual length of the movie and everything. Okay. So it, decisions one overall the message, decisions two the production. Gotcha. I got one more question out of my rapid fire bag, but before I say my question, I just let you know I let you be great because I wanted you to finish. You said you're gonna put a poll in your story. I just <laughs> wanted to catch you on um, the pause talk. I just wanted to let you know you said you didn't want to say something pause word. You put a poll in the story. So I just want you to know that you did that. Um, so, my last question. If you were in control of Baltimore for one day, what's the first thing you bring to your city? I would bring... I would bring, um... Like, if I had total power... Total control, nobody stopping you. You can bring the damn Super Bowl here, you, you can bring affordable you housing. You got one choice. That's your first choice. The first thing you do, you're not mayor or nothing. No title. You just got the power for one day. First thing you bring to your city. Could be anything. I would. I would bring the. I would bring the president here, and for twenty four hours I would bring him here, and I wouldn't tell nobody, but I would have him come, all the security and everything, and actually bring him, bring his ass into Penn North. The trenches. Bring bring his ass everywhere and record it so they can actually see how we live and they can actually see it because I don't think that they they see all the negativity but they don't see why it's like that. Mm -hmm. Like they act like they can't wrap their minds around it. I, yeah. I do be feeling like they be hopping over. When it comes to any black issue sometimes I feel like politicians or people that don't really want to see us good, they'll dance around the subject or the real answer. They don't know. Like mm -hmm. they, they don't know because they never been here. Like they haven't actually been in them environments to see or lived in them environments to see. Like bro, they don't even got no supermarket right there. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, it's not no supermarket right there. Where do people, right. like where do you get yeah. food from? Right, right. Like that's crazy. But I would bring, maybe not the president, but I would bring somebody that's as crazy as, as hopeful as I would be that you would want to bring the president in the back of my mind, I'm sitting here thinking like, what the fuck is he really going to do? He, he probably would go for that 24-hour spin, 
but how much action is really going to be put behind I mean, it? He ain't going to be here too much longer. Anyway. Somebody like Tyler Perry would probably do more for Baltimore mm-hmm. on a 24-hour ride than fucking Joe Biden. Right. No, honestly, I, I like your answer because that's where it took you. Pretty much what I took from your answer is you want to expose your city to the world. Because yeah. it's like it's like it's like almost like Joe Biden going live. You would expose your city 24 hours. The only thing that's on any news station, almost just like when they do their goddamn speaker of the, uh, the union joints and they put it on every channel. They yeah. cut it off yeah. just like that. But all day people got to see Joe Biden walk around Baltimore. And I'm saying no security. Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. Right. Right. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. He's gonna have a damn heart attack. <laughs> a couple, couple seconds away. Make sure I wouldn't bring him. Make sure you get that nigga a chicken box though. <laughs> Yeah, but I do appreciate what you're saying. So pretty much, you would just want to bring somebody with exposure so they can see your city from the lens of an everyday life in Baltimore. Yeah, because like, I do y'all agree with that. See y'all, the exposure. They don't see it at all. Like they don't. That's the problem. They don't understand like exactly how it is. All you see is oh, somebody got shot on the news. Oh, this happened. Right. But like, do you, have you actually ever been here to see the people? No, Talk they people. haven't actually been here. Right. My last question for you is, uh, name a celebrity or influencer that embodies having a global-minded demeanor. Hmm. Very good. <sighs> Jay-Z. Okay. Want to bring that down? Definitely. Yeah, because um, he come from the bottom. Obviously, everybody knows his story. But there's no way that he could... He be, he, he, he's been in so many different rooms with so many different people. Uh, and him as an artist, y'all remember, me being, when I was young, he had this uh, Linkin Park album with, mm-hmm. with the band, yeah. that was hard. Yeah. Yeah. But him as an artist, he always had diversity, even though he, he was a rapper, he had so much diversity, if you really look at his discography. Uh, he made soundtracks for movies, different type of rap, R&B. Uh, he's diverse as a businessman. Uh, real estate, um, all types of things, ventures that he do as a businessman. He even stepped into the sports world. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, Asian sports. Yeah. Sure. So I, I would say him, because he doesn't limit himself. He doesn't say like, oh, I'm just doing. He had the clothing line. Rock um, Rockaway. Yeah, he had the the record label. I would just say Shit, probably Jay Z. Yeah, he's done everything. Yeah, he's literally yeah, done everything. I them. So yeah, yeah I, I think that's a great answer. I think Jay Z for any answer of global talk, go talk, money talk, um, consistency talk, building up your own team. I feel like he's the perfect choice to answer for any of those type of topics because that's literally what his whole career has been based on. And that, sure. ladies and gentlemen, is our segment of rapid fire questions. Yes, 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 yes. Good job, my brother. Give one, give one, one that, pause moment. Y'all you know, scared me that. that? Do y'all be scared people with the rapid fire? Um, I think that it's just pretty much all about perspective and how you pretty much the question. Yeah, sometimes our stuff is like very easy, straightforward, but it's sometimes a little bit more thoughtful. But when we don't got a guest, man, this this guy, we going at it. Like yeah. first episode, he he really liked my questions because I definitely came at me like, all right, next episode I got you. So we always anxious to get the one on one episodes where he. Still got the best and, and craziest questions. Absolutely. And it just invokes character too. The whole purpose of Rapid Fire is to see how you think under pressure and to see how you feel when something is quick at you and it's like how do you respond to stuff like this? Because a lot of times being a diverse person, the to me the pluses of being a diverse person is knowing how to adapt in multiple yeah, situations. Hanging on, on your toes. Man. Always, always. So moving on from that, our next segment, if you feel like it's a moment from Rapid Fire questions or, or a moment. Question. Yeah, anything that we've talked about so far, is there anything you would like to spend the block on? And what we mean by spend the block is, it's a check-in pretty much. A check-in to see, is it anything that you wanted to elaborate more on? It could be something with one of your partners, it could be something within your brand. Yeah, um, I definitely, I didn't talk about the couple of things we got going on right now. Uh, my brother Dez, uh, aka GMD TV, aka GMD Dez, he just dropped the album. I like his album. Um, it's called Stand For, Forever Standing On Everything. That's on all platforms. Um, get it. I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan of him outside of him being my brother too. Just, uh, you know, us rapping together. It's just, we brothers. So like, our style just naturally fit together. But him as an artist on his own, um, it's all truth in his music and it sounds cool. And I got three features on this album, so go check that out. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of the album? James Flood. Uh, GMD Dez, Forever Standing on Everything. And we 
can get this on Spotify, um, Apple Spotify, Music. Apple Music, um, <laughs> Google Play, wherever music at. And then I have my album dropping um, next Friday. It's called Tears in the Dark. Um, my album, I, I wanted, when I rap, uh, when we, when people rap, I feel like most of the time it's like surface level. Like, especially men. Right. We don't really talk about feelings and stuff. So, uh, my album is more like about feelings. That's why it's called Tears in the Dark. Like, I wrote them songs and stuff over the last probably two years. Mm. Uh, you can hear me rapping about the movie in there. Uh, you can hear me rapping about the effects of the movie in there. Okay. Uh, talk a little bit about real estate on there. Uh, just more so about my emotions. I rap about anxiety. Um, what 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 I be going through when nobody see it? Like, just like tears in the dark. Like <laughs> men cry. I say it. That's why the album called Tears in the Dark. Right. So that's dropping December the first on all platforms. Um, and you can just go stream our music. That that's a real way to learn about GMD. Our music is is us. So um, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. So it talks about all of that. Um, so that was the first thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, we have a, a event next Saturday. Uh, if y'all free to come out to it, it's not too far from here. Uh, La Familia Soundstage. Okay. We're gonna be down there rocking out. Um, What's the date? Uh, December the second. Okay, so right after the album release, pretty yeah. much the day after the album. Yeah, release. yeah, day after the album come out. Gotcha. Um. So yeah, that's basically the top things I wanted to elaborate on. You guys said one more thing too. Just about, uh, I forgot. For um, no, pretty much so for that was just pretty much anything that you just wanted to spin the block on and just tell the people or not. The segment that we have after that is called Hidden Gems, where okay. you can leave a moment or a message, inspirational. We pretty much got inspirational moment, message, and hidden gems is two separate segments. But if you could put it in one, tell the people a hidden gem and something that you can, they can be inspired by our audience, your supporters, that's in any of the fields that you're doing, or if it's something just to start something like GMD. What is something you believe in with an inspirational message or an experience that you've been through? I would just say, um, anybody out there that's breathing right now, that's watching this, you are somebody. Uh, whoever you are, that's the gift. Whoever you are, that's the gift because you're different just because you're a person. No two people are alike. Um, don't let somebody that never did anything tell you that you can't do something. And even if they did something, that was their way of doing it. So don't limit yourself. If you feel like you should try something, there's no harm in trying it and not getting it done. Um, it's a lot of things that I'm currently doing. It's, I'm still doing it that I didn't reach the pinnacle yet. So don't not do something. Um, do what you feel. Go after what you want. Uh, there's plenty of ways to research things. Um, there's plenty of ways to connect with people and just strive to be your best and prayer and belief in a higher power is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not religious, but I believe in God, mm -hmm. the creator or the universe, whatever you want to call it. I believe in that and believe in that, believe in yourself and go after what you want and just be you. Being you is the biggest thing because... If you try to be somebody else, they're already out there. Hmm. Be you. I like that. Authenticity is always key. I mean, that was an amazing uh, interview, my brother. We appreciate you coming on here tonight with us, um, spreading everything that you do for your community, for your city. I can't wait to hear the album. I'm going to take my own time to go check out your movies. Um, I want to support them. Yeah. Mind and Demeanor again, JMD. Absolutely, the man. Decisions 1 and 2 out on Tubi. Appreciate y'all having me, man. I love this podcast. One of the best ones you. I've been on, man. We appreciate so, you, man. We appreciate yeah, you. We're just trying to bring a, a real down-to-earth viewpoint to, to the world, um, especially our culture. And I think that a lot of people like yourself can be under the radar in certain cases. Like, you know, I'm pretty sure you all know in your area, but I feel like your talents and what you've done up until this point needs to be displayed on a, a, a higher platform. We need to get a hundred more people, a thousand more people seeing Decisions 1 and 2, or like we spoke about the Film Fest, like even though Decisions 1 has came out and you released it, what's wrong with taking it to another city and re-releasing it again? You know right. what I'm saying? Starting that whole funnel over again because, you know, 
buddy, you ain't seen it yet. So it's like, it's still gonna be brand new to you. You know brand what I mean? So, and, and, that that's just to, push, my and, that's, and that's tailoring back off his message. Like, just because you may not hit the pinnacle or even the goal that you started with, do not give up. Just let that be more fuel to your fire. And in certain cases, you may need to, you know, edit up what you got going on a little bit and come out in a different direction, but never give up. Yeah, man, and that's what we got for you, man. We shining the light on our man, Mr. Devin Robinson, man. We appreciate you coming on. Special shout out to all I do it for the lovers. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at do it for number four, the love. And shout go to our website. Shout out Atelier at Baltimore for the beautiful studio. All Always right. producing that good quality stuff for us. Holler at them if you're trying to get in the game. Check out our website, doitforthelove.com, D-O-I-T. For the love.com and once again man thank you to everybody shout out to our highlight sponsor it is what it is network podcast and once again our special guest man mr david robson thank you and gmd family the gmd more like more blessings